I feel like when people film Q and A's, they always do it in their car. So I'm gonna do my Q and A in my car. Hi guys, welcome back or welcome to a video, my video, my channel. <laughs> Today I'm doing a Q&A. I asked you guys questions on Instagram. I asked you guys to ask me questions on Instagram. Can I speak? So I'm just gonna go through them. You guys ask lots of them. So let's just get right on into it. Oh, actually, before we get into it... I have a poppy. I love poppy. Honestly, my favorite flavor of all time is the orange cream. But the orange might be coming in second right now. I've been on an orange kick. Okay. Let's get into it. So I'm gonna start with questions that are kind of like basic questions, um, fun facts about me, stuff like that. How old am I? That was a very commonly asked question. I am 24. Fun fact, my birthday is on St. Patrick's Day and I was born in the year 2000. So whatever year it is, is how old I am come March 17th. So March 17th, 2024, I turned 24. It's kind of fun. So you'd better not forget how old I am ever. How tall am I? I'm just shy of 5'9". So I'm 5'8 and 3 quarters, but instead of just saying I'm 5'8 and 3 quarters or I'm 5'8 and a half, because I'm not quite 5'8 and a half, I'm probably closer to 5'9". Um, I just say I'm 5'9". Goodness gracious, that was like the longest answer for the most simple question ever. Oh, we're gonna be here all night. Uh, where are you from? I'm from Idaho in the United States of America. It's an awesome state, so. Someone asked, how did I meet my fiance? So if you didn't know, I'm engaged. I'm getting married in June of 2025. Uh, we were coworkers. So we worked together at a local restaurant and we were coworkers for a couple years and just became friends. And then the stars aligned, I'll say, and we we were able to go out on a date. The rest is history. So yeah, we started as coworkers, then we were friends, then we fell in love. Ooh. I definitely want to film more wedding stuff, so maybe comment down below if you want some wedding content. I should do like a little wedding series because I definitely want to document it for myself for like me to look back on. So if that's something you guys want to see too, let me know. <coughs> Excuse me. Let's just get into teaching stuff because majority of these questions are about teaching, which, which is awesome because obviously I'm a teacher and my whole page is about teaching. Okay, what grade do I teach? So I teach seventh grade life science. That is all I've ever taught. I student taught for seventh grade life science and ninth grade life science biology. And I basically was offered both positions and I wanted to do the seventh grade job. So that is what I've taught for the last two years. And that is what I'm gonna be teaching come this fall. So this will be my third year teaching seventh grade life science and I love it. It is seriously such a fun class to teach and I love that age. I love the grade, every everything about it. I just love it so much. When I tell people that I teach middle schoolers, they're like, oh, oh my gosh, how could you ever do that? And I always just tell them it is such a fun age. I honestly can't imagine doing anything else as of right now. I think eventually I want to maybe move up to high school, but for now I'm very content with my seventh graders. What made you want to become a teacher? Was it someone who taught you? And there were some other questions on here asking um, similar questions. Questions. I think part of me always wanted to be a teacher. My mom has this like art project that I did when I was in first grade where there were a bunch of questions asking like what I want to be when I'm older, if I could predict the future, what would I be doing type thing. And on multiple different projects I said that I wanted to be a teacher. So I knew I think deep down from a very young age that I wanted to be a teacher. Probably because I just had awesome teachers growing up. I thought it was fun to like play teacher. I would literally design like math worksheets and give it to my sister for her to do. And then I would grade them. <laughs> we would like get together and do like a fake summer school with like our neighbors and my sisters and stuff and I always loved like grading the papers after <laughs> um, so I think I was always destined to be a teacher but I didn't want to be a science teacher until high school I had an amazing AP biology teacher when I was a sophomore in high school and I not only did I love that class and I fell in love with learning about biology but she was just such a phenomenal teacher and she made it understandable and I just like I just looked up to her a ton so I think was, that was kind of when I thought oh maybe it's science that I want to teach and I basically went down the very traditional route I graduated high school went to college got my degree in education and now I'm a teacher so as much as the positive teachers influenced me in a positive way to want to become a teacher I feel like also the negative teachers did because they made me want to be a good teacher because I was like, we need more good teachers in this world because there are some really crappy teachers out there. I think we could all probably pick out a teacher or two that was pretty crappy and then a teacher or two that was like really awesome and impactful, influential. So I feel like both of those things made me want to be a teacher. I wanted to be better than the crappy teachers that I had and I wanted to be like the really awesome teachers that I had. Any tips for new teachers? Yes, I have a few. Like I said, I'm in my third year teaching or I'm going to be in my third year teaching. So I feel like I 
I still consider myself a new teacher. But I would say for your very first year, you cannot put pressure on yourself to be perfect. And I feel like that goes for any job ever. If you're starting new, you're not going to be perfect at it. But I think sometimes teachers especially can be like, no, this everything has to be perfect. You're going to mess up. You're going to procrastinate. Things are not going to be perfect. And you have to be okay with that. Really, the first year of teaching is personally, I would focus more on building a classroom environment and establishing like a safe space in your classroom and just learning how to interact with the kids because yeah maybe you've had experience in the classroom already with like a practicum or like student teaching for example but you've never had a classroom that's all to yourself where like all of these students are your students for however long they're in your class obviously if you're elementary they're like in your class pretty much all day but if you're secondary like me you have them for maybe one hour of the day every day but regardless that's your classroom and your classroom environment that you are establishing and so I would say like practice figuring out what that looks like so obviously the first year you're probably not gonna know what that looks like because it'll be your first time doing it so I would say just like experiment okay what what works for me how do I interact with these kids how do I make them feel safe in my classroom you might not get it right off the bat because that honestly comes with confidence you have to be comfortable before they feel comfortable or you at least have to like portray yourself as feeling comfortable and that does come with confidence so I feel like that's the number one thing I would focus on the the teaching itself the teaching of the content like I really feel like that does not have to be perfect but, but I would say focus more attention on building those relationships making everyone feel comfortable including yourself in your own classroom probably gonna take some time but I, but I think that's what you should focus on so I guess just to put that all together my tip is Focus more on your classroom environment, building those relationships with your students versus making sure you're teaching your content perfect because honestly, I feel like in your first year, the relationships and figuring out how to run a classroom is more important than making sure every single lesson is to a T perfect, exactly how it should be taught. That's what I would say. What age did you become a teacher? I became a teacher at 22? Yeah, 2022 was my first year where I was like an actual legit teacher. Crazy. If I wasn't a teacher, what would I be doing? Well, now I would be an influencer. <laughs> if I wasn't a teacher or a content creator slash influencer, I think I would be some sort of counselor or I don't know, working with kids in some way or just like helping people in some way. I just love it. I love working with kids. Maybe a coach. How do I manage my time during the school year? That's such a good question. It's a work in progress. I'm definitely still trying to figure out what that looks like for me because now obviously I have social media and that's like a full-time job in itself and I'm a full-time teacher and I have like other interests outside of that. Like I love going to the gym, obviously hanging out with friends, spending time alone. Like I love to read. Fun fact, I, I love to do pottery and I have like a pottery wheel and everything but I just like legit don't have time to do that so managing my time is tough I feel like I need to like chunk my time like okay I have an hour to edit this video after the hours up I need to move on to the next thing because I can just drag things on and like things will take longer than they need to because I'm just like spending hours and hours on something same thing with the gym like I need to set like a time block and be like okay you have one hour in the gym you are leaving if I got there at 5 30 I'm leaving at 6 30 so you have an hour make the most of it ready go you know that that is something I have not <laughs> mastered, but I think it's something I am going to work on for this upcoming school year. It's crazy how fast the day goes by, especially as a teacher. I feel like I get done with school and it's like already time to go to bed. I would say like prepping things the night before. So either like the beginning of the week, prepping all of your meals for that week, just saving time cooking is going to just, just give you more time to do other things. If I like get home and I already have dinner made, that just saves me so much time because I don't have to cook. It's hard to manage your time if you are not like actively putting an effort to manage your time So I would say those are like gonna be my top things. How do you prepare every day for your classes for the next day? That's a great question. This will be my third year So I kind of have like an outline of my school year and like the lessons I teach and the order of them and all of that But I tweak it every single year So usually what I will do at the beginning of the school week is I will map out what I'm doing that week We work at a school that has Mondays off. So it's only a four-day work week. So basically 
basically I will sit down and I'll be like, okay, what am I teaching these four days? And I will organize it in like one slideshow. So like I have my slideshow called my jump starts. And so like every jump start basically has an agenda for each day. So it has like a warm up question. It has the date and like reminders. And then it has the agenda for the day. So what I will do is I will go in and I will just make those four jump start slides. And I will write down like a very brief like bullet point agenda to kind of like help me see, okay, I'm planning on doing this this day this this day yada 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 then i will go in and i will actually like gather all the resources i need for that day usually i will do that the day before or i'll do it the morning of which is not always good but that consists of like printing copies making sure like any slideshows are pulled up any resources i need on my computer are pulled up that way when i get to school the next day my copies are made my slideshows pulled up like i can just drag it over and present it to the class um if it's something like a lab obviously that takes more preparation i will will know I'm doing the lab, let's say on Wednesday. So before Wednesday, I need to gather all my supplies and get it all set up. I have my prep at the end of the day, every single school day. So usually I will spend that prep setting up the lab for the next day if we're doing a lab. That allows me to have flexibility because if I plan out like a month in advance and then like we have a couple days where we get behind on something or something is just taking longer than I anticipated it, I don't have to like reschedule the next couple weeks because I'm only going like one week at a time. Now there's pros and cons to that because obviously if I have a student come up to me and say hey I'm gonna miss next Friday what are we doing? I can't really tell him for sure what we're doing. There's pros and cons to it. I don't know it's what works for me so that's kind of what I do to to prep for my lessons. Oh this person asked what's been the hardest thing about teaching? Um <laughs> I would say the hardest thing is showing up as the teacher I want to be when I am not feeling it, when I'm not feeling myself. Depending on the time of the month, depending on like what things look like in my personal life, just my energy levels, how much sleep I got, all of these other factors. If I'm showing up and I just am not feeling my best, it is so hard for me to have patience, have grace, be energetic, show up for these students in the way that I want to. And that is so hard for me. I can go back and think of days where like I specifically remember like I was not the teacher I wanted to be because I was maybe more irritable. I would snap at kids. I wasn't being the version of myself that I wanted to be and the version of myself that they deserve to have as a teacher. So I would say that's the hardest part because I just like beat myself up about that. And this is especially teaching middle schoolers who are very annoying at times. <laughs> so when I'm already like irritated, already just like I'm tired, I'm in a bad mood, whatever. And then middle schoolers are just being middle schoolers. It would just like grind my gears and I would react to situations in ways that was maybe not the healthiest and that is always tough because that just makes me feel awful <laughs> so not only am I not being the best teacher I can be for the kids and I know it's affecting the kids it also affects me because I just feel horrible about it so that is really tough and something if, especially if you're teaching middle schoolers something you need to be aware of is like know when you need to take some time to yourself and kind of reset because you're gonna thank yourself and your students are gonna thank you too what are your favorite places to show for classroom decor and resources. Honestly, I feel like I've gotten most of my stuff from Amazon. I made like a wish list my first year of like all these things that I wanted. And luckily, I had a ton of people like in my life that donated to it and, and bought me a lot of classroom resources. But Amazon just has a ton of awesome stuff. Resources like online resources, teachers pay teachers, you guys literally the best they have everything and you're supporting teachers so it's like i don't know it, it's a win-win and it's amazing teachers pay teachers 100 percent. does teaching kids fulfill you absolutely yes 100 percent. i literally love my job so much now i'm gonna answer some questions about like managing teaching and making content because those are like those are two full-time jobs pretty much when and how did you decide to start creating content like the get ready with me for social media so i have always loved making content i've always loved making videos but they've just been like for my personal Instagram and stuff and it wasn't until I started seeing other teachers posting their stuff on social media that I was like oh that might be kind of fun like I can I can make videos like that so I just started doing that and I basically I made some videos my first year of teaching so 2022 to 2023 school year but then it wasn't until summer before the 2023 school year so like a year ago this summer I started actually like making videos and being like okay I'm gonna I'm gonna 
actually seriously do this. And one of my first videos I posted like kind of popped off a little bit. It was me setting up my whiteboard. If you remember watching that video, you are a real one. I think it ended up getting like 500,000 views and I was like, whoa, that's so cool. And so I, I kind of like used that as a little bit of momentum. But then obviously I had like a long stretch where like my videos were not getting any views hardly. But I just started posting because I thought it was fun and I enjoyed it. I had no idea it was going to turn into what it did. And I'm like so grateful for it. This has like been the coolest thing ever. But it all started just because I enjoyed it and I liked making videos. It's kind of like a little hobby for me. And then of course I also had the intention of like I wanted to spread positivity around the profession because there were so many teachers posting about just like teaching sucks, teachers are underappreciated, which like we are sometimes, but like there are so many positive things and so many wonderful wonderful things in the world of teaching that like I wanted to highlight but also to show that like I'm a normal human being too I'm not just a teacher like I enjoy fashion I enjoy makeup I enjoy my doing my hair I don't know I have other interests besides it so that's kind of why I started and yeah it has taken off and it's been so cool I didn't really know anything about social media like before I started so literally in the last year I've kind of just like learned by experimenting what works for me what doesn't and I'm still figuring it out so stay tuned to see if I figure it out. How do you create content and teach? How do you balance it? Balancing it is tough. I feel like I'm constantly like thinking of things that I can create and you know what else I can do but that goes for both teaching and and content creation. I feel like I'm always thinking of ideas and you know I love being creative so I think teaching allows me to have that outlet, but this also allows me to have that outlet. So if content creation is considered work, I never stop working because I'm always thinking of ideas, whether it's for social media or for teaching. I'm always, I'm always thinking of content ideas. So I have not quite figured out how to balance it, but that's what makes life fun. Like life is not going to be perfect and it's going to be all over the place sometimes. So I'm kind of just going with the flow. How long does it take me to edit the ASMR Get Ready With Me videos? I love them so much. I'm glad you love them. Every single one of those videos is the same. So I have like the editing down. So I would say it takes me like 30 to 45 minutes to edit like one of those videos between like obviously chopping it all up and then like making a caption, posting it, linking things from starting to edit to actually it being posted on both Instagram and TikTok, it probably takes like an hour. Tips for starting a teacher gram. I say just go for it and like you cannot think about what other people are gonna think. You can't think about like the views. You can't think about, I don't know, like comparing yourself. Easier said than done. I definitely do that too. But just post what is genuine to you. So whatever your strengths are, whatever your interests are as a teacher, if you wanna make like a, a teacher gram, if you love your outfits and you feel like you have fire outfits every day, like record your outfits and post them. If you think you have awesome resources and you think you have a bunch to offer when it comes to teaching resources, whatever grade you teach, whatever subject you teach, like post them, talk about them. If you think you have like funny teacher humor and you want to make like funny teacher videos, post it. People say that there's not enough room for everyone on social media because yeah, there might be a lot of teachers who make teacher Instagrams, teacher TikToks, whatever, but no one is you. And so you are going to stand out because you are you and you're different. So if you're thinking about making it, just do it. My camera overheated while I was in my car. So I had to take a little break and now we're back. I actually don't remember where I was and what I was really talking about. So now I'm just gonna answer some random questions. Where are your glasses from? I get all of my blue light glasses from Amazon. My prescription glasses are from iBuyDirect, but any like fun glasses like this are from Amazon. They're just blue light glasses. Um, I'll link them in the description. Your hair washing routine and what are your tried and true go-to hair products? And how many times a week do you wash your hair? I only wash my hair a couple times a week, like one to two times. Well. Two to three. And I love the Miel Rosemary hair oil. I feel like that has made my hair grow a ton. And, and then I love the Briogeo, Briogeo, I don't know how you say it, but shampoo and conditioner. That's what I use in the shower and I love them. I also really love the brand Day. Day hair, they are wonderful. All their products, their shampoo, conditioner, their styling cream. I use it every time I slick back my hair. What kinds of books do I read? I read a lot of like romance novels and then I love a good fantasy novel like the Akatar series. I'm about to start reading Throne of Glass. I haven't done it yet, but I am I'm going to. But I also love love a good romance. I love Emily Henry. She's probably my favorite romance author. I'm currently reading the Magnolia Park series. I, I'm kind of thinking I'm gonna do like a back and forth between that and Throne of Glass and get through those series because I've heard it's good to take breaks. 
I don't know, we'll see. We will see. Have you ever had skin problems? <laughs> I never had acne when I was growing up. Like middle school, high school, never really had acne. And then it wasn't until college that I started to get acne. I have like just persistent breakouts here and here and on my forehead that I've been working on fixing. Um, what's your workout split? What workouts do you do? Um, my fiance is actually my trainer, so he does all my workouts. I'll put the link to his workout program in my bio or in the description. It's just, it's like a hybrid training plan. So it's um, a mix between lifting and cardio. Have you ever been to Italy? Yes, I actually have been to Italy when I was young. Don't really remember it though. My favorite makeup and skincare. My favorite makeup is Merit. If you want to shop Merit and support me a little bit, you can shop through the link in my description box. And then I also love Say. They're both wonderful brands. And then skincare, I am still figuring out what skincare I like, so I'm not going to share quite yet. All right, and that is going to be it for today. I'm going to call that good. Thank you so much for watching, especially if you're still watching. I don't know how long this video is going to end up being, but if you're still watching, I love you so, so much. You have a wonderful day. Make sure you like and subscribe. Maybe comment if you're feeling nice. That is it. I love you guys so much. Thanks for watching um 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 um